The Quakers speak of the still small voice within. Last night we meditated on the tiny beings the size of the thumb sitting on the lotus in our heart. Christ talks about sending after him the spirit to guide. For some of us this weekend, there has been <clears throat> increasing confusion. Now we meet in a church, which almost adds to the confusion. Here we are in the country, yet our weekend isn't really a weekend in the country. Here we are among socially good and interesting people, yet our weekend isn't really social. Here we are in a church, and yet our weekend isn't exactly religious. Here we are using words, and yet our work together isn't exactly intellectual. As if in each of us there once was a fire, and for some of us there seem as if there are only ashes now. But when we dig in the ashes, we find one ember, and very gently we fan that ember, blow on it. It gets brighter, and from that ember we rebuild the fire. <laughs> we will this afternoon and some this evening and tomorrow talk about methods and practices and getting on with it. But let's not get lost in the forms. The only thing that's important is that ember. Is that tiny breath of the living spirit. That's what you and I are here to celebrate. That though we've lived our life totally involved in the world, we know. We know that we're of the Spirit. And as you go towards God, you learn about yourself. And when you return from God, you learn about the world. But when you are in the world, you know not of the world. You cannot see the forest for the trees. At first, that still small voice, that tiny ember, is overshadowed by the incredible pressures, desires, attachments, possessions, collection of the world, of the marketplace. The ember gets stronger, flame starts to flicker a bit, and pretty soon you realize that all we're going to do for eternity is sit around the fire. We're going back into the Hridayam, the cave of the heart. And the only
only beings that will sit around the fire with us are those who recognize the spirit. It's been an interesting journey for me, a social psychologist, for whom the word God was a blasphemy. To come to realize that I am a God-man and that my whole life is that of coming into the Spirit, confusing, embarrassing, Socially awkward. <laughs> Much easier to embrace humanism. To love the beautiful things of the world, nature. To be a good person. But the pull seems to still be there. And the confusion in many of you comes from the recognition of that pull and the realization that that pull doesn't seem to fit in with the life you've designed for yourself. Even a good life, even a yogic life, even a communal life, even an economically simple life. Because your life was built out of despair. Out of a feeling that though you had touched the spirit, you could never be the spirit. Though you had touched love, you could never be love. But your unworthiness has led you to sell yourself short. Just feel in your heart now your own beauty. Allow for a moment yourself to recognize that you are a being of the Spirit. That the light of the universe can pour through you. You. Just who you are. You. Someone once said to me that the reason churches are so sterile most of the time is that because whatever spirit was in there, everybody came empty and took away the spirit until there was nothing left. And so it has been with your body and your personality, which is the temple you're living in. Dry, because the spirit left. To breathe the spirit back into body, personality, daily life. Take somebody that looks like a dried up prune and turns them into a lotus flower. I was once told an image about a a circle 
and in the circle was a point in the center. And the point in the center was God, and the outer edge of the circle was world. And one stood with one foot on the circle and one foot on the center. And you could tell where a person was in their evolution by where the weight of the foot was. Because you put weight on the foot to overbalance where the pull was. So that if you were being pulled to the right, you put your weight, you pressed on the left. We have been in the world and are pulled by the world, so we're just beginning to press with the foot that is in the center of the circle. Anybody who has tasted is being pulled by the center of the circle, and they must press on the outside. Ramakrishna said, quick, get me tobacco. And they said, but Babaji, you don't smoke. And he said, I have to want something or I'll leave. A being who has tasted of that kind of a unity, one of us, another being just like us, It's all different. I do my work. I love nature. I enjoy food. I delight in humor. I love poetry. Music is exquisite. And yet it's all like clouds in the sky. None of it is the thing itself. Through each of it, I hear the Spirit. The world is God, but to not know God leaves you only with the world. Only when you understand that the sounds your ear can hear and the sights your eyes can see and the tastes your tongue can taste and the feelings your skin can feel and the smells your nose can smell and the thoughts your brain can think are merely the tiniest reflections of the grandeur of the source, who you are. I come in the name of the Father, says Christ. You don't get lost in Jesus. You go through Jesus to the Father. You don't get lost in the beauty of the mother, of the waterfall and the tree. You go through the waterfall and the tree to come to God. You don't worship the gate. You go into the inner temple. To enter into a relationship with the Guru, with Christ as your Guru. You see, everybody in this room has a guide. I 
I'm not going to pull any punches anymore. I'm not going to make believe for any of you now. I'm just going to tell you what the universe looks like from where I'm sitting. You see, all of it turned out to be real. All the angels and the cherubs. I wish I could share with you the kind of teachings that I'm receiving now. Because my teachers at this moment are beings such as Jethro, who was Moses' father-in-law. Lao Tzu, Pericles, a 14th century Kabbalistic teacher, Christ, Saint Teresa, Nityananda, my guru who left his body a year and a half ago. These are my actual teachers at present, not through writings, through the living teachings. <laughs> These beings are living in my universe in the same way you are. It's all real. There are planes and planes and planes of realities with beings Everybody in this room has a guide, a guru, a spiritual friend. Kalyan Metta. For some of you, your guide may be in physical form. Somebody such as Sacha Sai Baba. For many of you, your guide is not in physical form any longer. Some of you I've seen have Ramakrishna as a guru. Some of you have Christ as a guru. Some Babaji, some Ramana Maharshi. Some Cochise. American Indian master. You may or may not know your guru in this lifetime. That will be a function of your faith. For though your guru, like the ally that, Ka that Castaneda speaks of them, stands always right behind you, right in your heart, right over your head, right on your lap. It is only when you can set aside the limits of your own senses and your own mind that you can recognize your guru. Your guru already recognizes you. Christ is present in this room at this moment because some of us in purity have invited him to come. And these masters, these guides, have only
only stayed in form, have only withstood the pull of the Father, the pull of the merging into God, in order to guide you home. And they will be right with you no matter how long it takes. To understand the sacrifice of the Son leaving the Father, a sacrifice which far exceeds the sacrifice of crucifixion, because for a realized being, leaving the body is certainly no sacrifice. It's the staying in the body that's the sacrifice. My guru used to write in a book two pages of Ram, 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 Ram every day. And he wrote that only in order to be able to stay down on earth for me. Me meaning those of us who were genuinely reaching to know God. Buddha every morning looked out over all of the Buddha fields to see who was ready. To understand the sacrifice of these beings is to understand what pure love is really about. There's nothing in it for them. If you get enlightened, they don't get a raise in pay. They don't get any closer, they're already home. Their act is done without selfishness and without condition. You've never been loved that way before. All human love is always with condition. I love you if you love me. I love you if you're good. I love you if you don't kill me. Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Only a God being can love without condition because there is nothing they need from you. But while they don't need your trust or your faith, or your love, you need to trust them, have faith in them, and love them. They don't need your surrender, but you need to surrender. You will notice, as I have noticed, that as the spirit becomes a more focal point in your life, when you start to begin to feel filled instead of empty, your life starts to become very simple. Many are of you experience such confusion. Do I want to earn money or do I want to live without it? Do I want sex or don't I? Do I want a man or do I want a woman? 
Do I want a new stereo? Do I want a place in the country? Do I want to go to Europe? Do I want to go to India? Do I want to go to this ashram or that ashram? And that all seems so real. But once you've honored the connection that's already standing behind you, above you, and in your lap, and in your heart, you've got your playmate for eternity. And all the rest of it is the support system. If you have money, fine. If you don't have money, okay. If you're in India, beautiful. If you're in America, wow. If you have a car, great. If you walk, yeah. If you have new clothes, delightful. If you're wearing old clothes, uh-huh. It all gets very simple. Very simple. The confusion is merely a confusion of motives. When I looked into Maharaji's eyes, I met a playmate that I couldn't fathom. Because everywhere I was, he was. Everything I knew, he knew. There was no joke I could think of that he didn't see the humor in. There was no sadness I could experience that he couldn't empathize with. You ever have a playmate like that? Didn't want anything from me? Now and then when I'd sit with him, something would happen, some little incident, and there would be humor, and I would laugh, and he would laugh. And then I would see that what I was laughing at was not really the joke. There was another joke, and I'd laugh at that, and he'd laugh. And then I'd look at him, and I would see that he was laughing still three more jokes out that I couldn't yet laugh at. Do you ever have a playmate like that? Do you ever have a playmate that is the Buddha and is the Christ and is the mother and is the child? Sometimes we'd be able to cut up apples and hold them for Maharaji because he would eat our karma. He would take on stuff. He would just eat up stuff by eating the fruit. And he would reach out and just take a piece of apple from your hand. And it was like feeding a bird in the woods. It was like having a deer come up and nuzzle in your hand to eat. And the next moment he would turn and have the ferocity of a wild thunderstorm. And every time I challenged him with my intellect, he would pull my beard and laugh at me. Did you ever have a friend like that? Everyone here has such a friend. It's very simple how you do it. Just like children have imaginary playmates, they hang out with somebody named Ronald. And Ronald always knows just what to do and how to do it. Well, you have Ronald. 
Or Josephine. You just hang out. And any dimension of absolute perfection, you know that your playmate has. And you hang out with that playmate. Get closer and closer and closer. As you see, my playmate turned out not to be my guru in body. That only turned out to be a few memories of a man in a blanket and a number of quotations written in a book. And at one moment when I sat in the temple courtyard and everybody sat across the way, rubbing his feet and eating the apples he was throwing at them and loving him, I had a moment of clarity and I saw that isn't what it is. That's just a body. That is merely the guru in sport. And at that moment, I thought, what am I doing here? I don't have to be in this temple. This isn't where it is. And an old devotee of Maharaji's ran across the courtyard, came up to me, and he touched my feet. And I said, why did you do that? He said, Maharaji sent me over to do that. He said, Ram Das and I understand each other perfectly at that moment. Now here he is a year and a half after he's been burned up on a fire. And he's in this room at this moment. In fact, even as I speak, he goes in and out of my body. It's that intimate. If you're quiet when you meditate, if you truly open your heart, if you speak to your beloved, you may call it God, you may call it Guru, whatever being you feel close to, Christ, you can talk to. Ananda Mai Ma. Amal, all of the beautiful holy mothers, all the beautiful living spirits that have ever walked the earth. You hang out. You hang out with them. Hang out with the perfect playmates. And slowly you just become one of them. The transformation will be complete when Maharaji and I are one. The transformation will be complete when you and the being who's above you, behind you, and in your lap become one. When Don Juan and Castaneda are the same being. For in truth, there's only one of them. There's only one of them. There is only one guru in the whole game. It's all just forms. It's just forms. The real work you have to do is in the privacy of your own heart. All of the external forms are lovely. But the real work is your inner connection. 
first with your playmate, beyond that with God, and actually with your own self. It's really time for you to see through the absurdity of your own predicament. You aren't who you thought you were. You just aren't that person. And in this very lifetime, you can know it. Right now. Every miracle that occurred in the Bible is occurring on this earth at this moment. I am living in a world of miracles, and they're all just the stuff of it all. Nothing of living truth has been lost. It's all right here. It's not for later, it's for now. Right now. If you feel a veil away from it, if you feel closed from it, just quiet your mind. Open your heart. Quiet the mind, open the heart. How do you quiet the mind? You meditate. How do you open the heart? You start to love that which you can love and just keep expanding it. You love a tree, you love a river, you love a leaf, you love a flower, you love a cat, you love a human. But go deeper and deeper into that love. Till you love that which is the source of the light behind all of it. Behind all of it. So you breathe up through your head. And as you allow yourself to loosen the hold just a little bit of your models, plane after plane will open to you. You will, in truth, visit with all of the hells. And all of the heavens and all of the heavenly hosts and the realms of purple light, and the realms of golden light, and the realms of white light. And you'll go through spaces that are so icy, cold, and impersonal, and you'll go through spaces of such ecstasy and bliss. Poets have spent thousands and thousands of pages describing one tiny bit of one of these, and you will pass through each and each one you will cling to or be horrified by, and you will have to work with it until you've accepted it, honored it, given it space, and then say, thank you, but I must go on, because I want to merge with God. I want to know who I really am. And less and less do you tarry along the way to collect or to avoid another experience because you can't afford it, because you want to get on with your journey. Breathe in through the heart. Breathe out through the throat. Breathe in through the throat. Breathe out through the third eye. Breathe in through the third eye. Breathe out through the top of the head. Breathe in through the top of the head. Breathe out through the first chakra about eight inches above the head. Reach. Breathe in through the first chakra. Breathe out through the second chakra, twice as far over the head. Go up. Let yourself go. Breathe in through the second chakra. 
Breathe out through the third chakra. Breathe in through the third chakra. Higher, breathe out through the fourth chakra. Sit straight, breathe out. Breathe in through the fourth chakra. Breathe out through the fifth chakra. Breathe in through the fifth chakra. Breathe out through the sixth chakra. Over the head, way up high. Breathe in through the second chakra, sixth chakra. Hold it. Press up, way up against the seventh chakra. Press up, hold the breath. Press with the held breath up against the seventh chakra, high over the head. And when you can't hold the breath any longer, let it out very fast and push up through the seventh chakra, high over the head. Let it out hard and push. Go back to the heart. Breathe in through the heart. Breathe out through the throat. And this time really go up. Draw all the energy, total attention to where you're breathing. Breathe in through the throat. Breathe out through the third eye. Breathe in through the third eye. Breathe out through the top of the head. Breathe in through the top of the head. Breathe out through the first chakra, eight inches above the head. Reach. Breathe in through the first chakra over the head. Breathe out through the second chakra. Breathe in through the second chakra. Breathe out through the third chakra. Breathe in through the third chakra. Breathe out through the fourth chakra. Breathe in through the fourth chakra. Out through the fifth chakra. Breathe in through the fifth chakra. Out through the sixth chakra, high over the head. Take a deep breath into the sixth chakra and hold it. Press up against the seventh chakra, high over the head. Reach for God. God, know me. God, know me. God, know me. Hold the breath. Press up. Up. God know me. God know me. God let me know myself. When you can't hold it any longer, let it out forcefully and press up. And sit quietly. Now ask your guide to place a hand on your head and give you a blessing. And focus on the top of your head. No suggestion. Just feel the connection right at the top of your head. And at this moment, Know your guide. Feel that love pour into you.
the love that wants nothing of you but that you know God. There is nothing that I want of any of you other than that you know who you are. There's nothing you can do for me that I don't already have. For that hand is on my head. That being lives in my heart. The confusion is saying, I don't know. But the minute you are quiet, you find out that in truth you do know. For in you, you know. It's funny, we get educated, we go to therapists, but we really don't ever believe we could change. Change in the most profound sense that where in the core of ourselves we felt ugliness, there is suddenly beauty. Where in the core of ourselves we felt unworthiness, there is suddenly purity and spirit. Who could have believed that you could be that beautiful? Did you believe it? Did you believe that you were the living spirit? Did you believe it? Did you believe that that little flickery ember you felt now and then could become the flame that would consume every impurity within you and leave you like a new baby born again in this very life, born into the spirit? Do you have believed that about yourself? Everything in you that you don't need to go to God, you can let go of. You don't need loneliness, for you couldn't possibly be alone. You don't need greed because you already have it all. You don't need lust because you're being offered the ultimate beloved who sees your true beauty. You don't need doubt because you already know. Pain, pleasure, loss, gain, fame, shame. Pain, pleasure, loss, gain, Fame, shame, life, death, good, evil, loss, gain, pleasure, pain, fame, shame, pleasure, pain, loss, gain, fame, shame. Black, white, here, there, now, then, pleasure, pain, life, death, up, down. The 
beyond all polarities I am. Let the judgments and opinions of the mind be judgments and opinions of the mind, and you exist behind that. A lot of what is happening this weekend is just the planting of tiny little seeds. If you feel uncomfortable and tired and turned off, or whatever you feel, it's all all right. No judgments, no opinions. Just notice it. Bliss, emptiness. Emptiness, bliss. I'm depressed. Depression, ah, so. Ah, so. Ah, so. Ah, so. For the peace that surpasseth understanding is the peace that comes from being connected with yourself. You are what you are, and you are God. You are what you are, and you are God. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, 
rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And I say rejoice. 
rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.